Okay, hey everybody, uh, this is Brett, and this week's uh, class for Crypto Mastery. I'm not going to hit the video here today because I just got back and it was cold out. I had a hat on, it's got a terrible case of hat head. So there you go. Um, anyway, plus much more important things to talk about. And um, let's see, that's why CNBC will skip uh, the uh, big news here course the uh, big bank failures and we'll unpack that a bit more in tomorrow's active trader class just wanted to welcome everybody uh Rene, lisa pirate j leslie sam julie rick alex tori uh david glenn okay welcome and um yeah so let's just dive right into it you know the it, it's um it, this is a tricky one because uh, the markets are rallying because uh, apparently uh, the, you know typically bottoms are hallmarked by major collapses and bank collapses like Lehman Brothers. And so I've been saying that there was another shoe to fall, maybe a black swan event. So we've had that. So I think that you know, since the government has agreed to cover everything, even past the FOMC, I'm sorry, the FDIC insurance, <laughs> you can tell what my, my, where my mind is, the yeah, FOMC that's coming. So we'll get to that as well. And that is part of the answer. And let me just pull up a chart so we can see what I'm kind of relegating uh, talking about here. So this is Bitcoin, of course. Uh, we'll look at the uh, indicators here in a minute. But so who would have thought we'd rally up here past the 25,300 level, which is that line in the sand. So the um, you know new information equals new decision. You've heard me say that before. And so certainly uh, this is new information. The um, banks, um, Signature Bank and as uh, Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, of course, th two of the biggest banks in the country. And uh, these are number two and number three of the biggest bank failures of all time. So um, so that's a big deal. But the fact is this, the long version, long story short, is that the Fed is more likely, if not assuredly, not going to raise interest rates 50 basis points and likely not even at all. And so in a a risk off environment or risk on environment rather with the interest rates potentially holding for now. Now, this is not me and this is the beginning of the next bull run. I mean, not necessarily. However, there's are, there are two sides of this. And I'll just say right up front, there are times that my spidey sense I feel strongly about. And but this case, I'm not going to choose a side because I, I have a feeling that I'll be I'll be wrong. The spidey, my spidey sense, if I try to force it, uh, is um because these markets are so good at fooling us, and especially on the short time frames, it was just terrible over the weekend on the on the uh, sort of doing some day trading. I just stopped altogether. So, what is just to to put a frame around that? If we are, if we can assume and agree that we are seeing the rebuilding and the global kind of reset of the the global financial system, this is going to be. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very volatile. And the uh, the powers that be, they're not going to give up that uh, easily. So, you know, some are saying that Signature Bank, even one of the authors of the Dodd-Frank Act, I think it was uh, Roger Dodd, I might get the name wrong, but he was saying that Signature Bank was not insolvent. They should not have been shut down, that they were being targeted because it's a crypto friendly bank. Okay. So, you know, so that's something to keep in mind. These bigger banks, they don't, they're not going to want to relinquish control that easily. And, um, you know, who, who really knows? We don't really know. There's shadow banks. There's all kinds of things out there. I was watching a YouTube video this morning by a reputable um, PhD and uh, who wrote a book about a lot of this. And he basically said all of the banking, the, the debt load is so much worse than we think. And uh, we're talking about shadow banks and then these uh, leveraged banking instruments that that we're just in the first inning of the unraveling of the financial system. So not to scare everybody, but this is going to be a bumpy ride. And so what I mean by that and the takeaway there is please don't go rushing into anything. We want to be a little careful till we kind of see, hey, this thing is truly bottomed here. So in that, with that in mind, and we'll get back to the news, but just from the TA perspective, now we've pushed much higher over that 25,003 level. However, the big thing is where do we close today? Because this could easily sell off. And if it, if it sells off and it's below 25,3, then I think we, you know, we have a short pullback. It would, 
more than likely it will retest this as support because as these break into new trend channels, you know, we see this kind of thing usually at least the very least. So um, we don't want to go rushing into any, but however, I do like the fact that this I posted this morning, it's a terrible graphic there. Now that I have this fancy new circle, let's do it that way uh, here. So this, this, uh, when these are the, um, Moving average ribbons, by the way, it's kind of a cool tool. I don't always use it, the EMA ribbon. What I like about it is, <clears throat> let me just turn it off. It shows us the same information uh, pretty much as the 21 and 50, but, sorry to clear my throat there. But with the ribbons, what we're looking for is that tightening of the ribbons here. And, uh, and of course, wanting to be above them and the ribbons are green. Green means we're above those prices. Whereas where we're red, you see this pivot right here where it went long and then short. Uh, that was a um, shift in, in market uh, structure right there. So, you know, and and then and, and go looking back, we actually had a long signal back here. So I'm um, back in, uh, January. So that's interesting. But at any rate, didn't go up, didn't stay going up very long uh, and then pull back down. So where we are here, though, is this this kind of looks like, although not nearly as deep, but, um, you know, I don't know why it's reminding me of that COVID crash, just that pattern. And uh, we'll look at that, too. So so we're going to wait and see how things kind of settle out today. Um, I do want to get back to the news, kind of got ahead of ourselves. But uh, since we're on the subject, isn't it interesting that our signals were calling that ahead of time? Like as of this weekend and Friday, we thought we'd open Monday and the markets would be blood red, everything down big. But um, the story that Wall Street sort of took away from it and the bigger investors is that, hey, uh, the Fed's not going to raise rates again this meeting. They're going to bail out everyone's money anyway. So... What typically happens is the Fed will keep raising rates until they break something. And that's a hell of a sign that they broke something if two of the biggest banks just failed. But I don't know that we're getting the whole story, right? Because Signature Bank allegedly was not insolvent. So, so there's, there's some, you know, is, there's definitely reason to be cautious here. Everyone get that? You just... You know, it, please don't have FOMO with this. Uh, we, if we pull back here to this range and start bouncing again, I think that would be a safer time and back above this 25.3. Now, if we, now the opposite, or the other, on the other hand, right here we go on the other hand again. So this is typically the, the pattern. However, when Bitcoin does finally bottom and start to run, it doesn't always do this. We'll look at that in the charts. So if we close near the high today and even higher, then I think we could see pushes higher and um, get to 30,000 pretty quickly, which is what I was saying a while back. Because there's not a whole lot in the between here. You see that there's a lot of sort of con congestion here, consolidation right at 30,000. But between when well, we dropped from 30K down into the 20,000s, it was a big drop here. There was nothing in between. And, uh, and so that's why I'm suggesting that if we push higher, it would be up to 30 pretty quick. Okay. And then from there, who knows? We'll see. But uh, we could have a nice little window here to catch some profits. And, you know, I do want to talk about that a bit, not just be overly cautious. We're all here. We're, you're all busy and want to make, um, you know, catch some swings in the swing trades. So, so this is what we're looking at. This does look good. We have bullish signals on here. We have an ERI and the TSI. And we have the signal line going green. And again, so after today, after tonight, if we get a bell, then, and we're above that 25,300, then I think we're in, a, in for a bullish push up to 30K. And so this would be an area to buy some alts, buy some Bitcoin, buy some ETH, and then, then sell up in the 30,000 range. Maybe not sell all of it, but um, that's what we kind of get into more on uh, the active trader class tomorrow. Uh, if you're not an active trader, let's just go to moonstream.io slash M3 for some more information there. And uh, so let's dive back into the news here. I know you guys have probably been hearing about this all weekend. And I'm going to go pretty quickly because uh, I need to keep the class to an hour today. I've got some other things I've got to do, record a video for our YouTube channel. And over at Max Wright's so channel, so I haven't done that in a while. So anyway, Silicon Valley Bank, that was the first. Signature Bank, Reignite, Moral Hazard Dilemma. 
We can look at that. Crypto is being debanked, what that means for Bitcoin and the industry. So uh, there's that. And uh, now this is bullish here. Binance also said they're going to convert a billion dollars worth of their stable coin into Bitcoin, Ether, and BNB. Isn't that interesting? Maybe stable coins aren't as stable as people were, were led to believe. And so that is going to push prices higher, ostensibly. And um, let's see crypto gains as Bitcoin breaks 26. Now, 26 is kind of a key resistance area. So we saw us pull back from there. And that's about all I want to get into here. We can look at some movers. But um, yeah, so let's dive into it. All right, I'll um, close this out here. All these ads. Okay, so Binance will convert 1 billion. I want to read this a little deeper because I haven't had time to look into this much. So crypto exchange Binance said it will convert. We already talked about that to support the market. Uh, well, you know, all the, it, it, when running a business in marketing, you know, first is, you know, always spin things as a positive. They might be hedging against their uh, own stable coin, kind of deleveraging. But uh, let's see, fund five seconds cost, barely $1.29 for the transaction. So... Yeah, as I said, most likely contributed to the buying pressure. Why did the markets push higher? Well, okay, so part of it is Binance pushing billion dollars into the markets. Certainly helps. We'll look at the uh, total market cap here in a minute. And uh, let's see, uh, so Ethereum back over 1,600. And um, so, okay, Silvergate. I wonder what Binance is up to. Um, because Kraken has the news was out, Kraken's going to start their own bank. I wonder, in my spidey sense, I think Binance probably will start its own bank too, and maybe that's the wave of the future. And all of this is going according to plan. But, um, banking crisis here in the U.S. likely to push more crypto firms offshore. Let's take a look at that. And, uh, let's see, some metaverse fashion cares, coin base, adding DeFi, not a big deal. All right, not right now. All right, banking crisis, US likely to push crypto firms offshore. So it's from Lichtenstein, I believe that's how you say that, island jurisdictions, potential benefactors. Yeah, so, well, Switzerland, that's where people go to hide their money anyway. And uh, see, so I think in the short term, you know, that may that's probably what will happen. And then um, the U.S. will kind of lean on this somehow and try to bring things back over to the U.S. And ultimately, everything will settle down. So um, let's see, bridge share in terms of solution and banking crisis is not crypto's fault. That could be interesting, too. Not a whole lot more we want to push on here. Regulatory pressure. OK, regardless where crypto companies look for the banking partners, regulatory risk in their home jurisdiction will likely loom large. So, um, yeah, and this is also going to come down to, I was alluding to, the U.S. banks would still, or regulators would still, even if you go offshore, try to handcuff onto this somehow. So the willingness, willingness of internationally established banks to do business with U.S. crypto entities at the moment also hangs on the question of what the U.S. regulators will let the companies do for their banking partnerships. Uh, see, this presence per slight. Yeah, exactly. So European Asian banks already have some U.S. presence. So U.S. regulators could lean on those U.S. presence if they don't kind of play nicely with what our regulations are. So like I said, you know, some arm wrestling, hemming and hawing in short term might claim a short term victory, but the U.S. isn't going to just let this all go offshore and um, operate with uh, impunity. So, OK, well, I haven't read this article, but here again, only crypto companies that are regulated and have proper compliance and governance will be able to access non-U.S. banks uh, so to Dubai. Right. OK, so that's because certainly there are they want to play nice with the U.S. All right. Good. Done with that. Let's see. And if you guys have any questions, let me pull up the chat. Forget to do that. And I don't see any just yet. So uh, this suggesting the bank crisis is not uh, crypto's fault. Voluntarily wound down. I can't imagine it was voluntarily. $12 billion in assets. Um. Not as bad as SVB though, which was 200 billion in assets. I heard it was 180, but that's big. 
signature bank shut down by state regulators. Uh, wait a minute. What's Oh, I'm sorry. Silvergate. That's right. I got it mixed up. They're all starting the same, sound the same. Silvergate, Signature, SVB. Maybe we should just stay away from banks to start with S. How about that? Uh, articles excerpted from the node. All right. Let's see. Client service more than others. I'm just skimming this, you guys. Um, so Silvergate, right. Run into the ground by a bank run that was led at least partially encouraged by the US government. Um, huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there was a rumor also that uh, US government, so the US government holds quite a lot of Bitcoin, contrary to what most people um, believe or are aware of. A lot of it came from the um, Silk Road um, collapse and they retrieved a lot of that uh, bitcoin so at any point there was a rumor that the u.s government was dumping bitcoin last week unconfirmed at least i haven't seen anything on it so those uh, certainly uh, if they have it then they still are holding the potential to do that and but we had ourselves a good old-fashioned bank run sounds like right run spurred on by management risk so i think you guys do you, do you want me to dive into that you guys are probably aware of what happened it just uh, you know banks they don't hold all of the funds in the banks. For those of you that aren't in the U.S., there's like 13 percent. I think it's called fractional reserves. So, you know, they are only uh, the bank branches only hold a, a certain percentage of the actually cash on hand. So after, let's say, five, let's say five percent of the account holders go withdraw their funds. panics and that creates a bank run so but um the fractional reserve system works pretty well on on balance unless everyone tries to get their money out at the same time and uh so yeah and then here as i was saying barney frank i got his name there i said roger i think but uh i said roger dodd i don't know where i came up with that but barney frank uh yes the frank and dodd frank act came out and says clients may have overestimated Signatures exposure to crypto. So he's basically saying that uh, he doesn't think they should have been shut down. So, and that signature could have remained an ongoing concern. Regulators disagreed after customers withdrew more than 10 million. That's a hell of a day. So there you go. They were working hard even on a Sunday. Government will work hard. They will work hard if they can go grab money from somewhere. Uh, and all kidding aside, uh, let's see. Sorry, okay. oh, it's something not true. Media outlets, no, suggests this is crypto. Yeah, this is what I wanted to get to. Barney said, it wasn't necessarily a crypto problem, but a messaging about a crypto problem. I think what was the regulators wanted to send a very strong anti crypto message. We became the poster boy because there is no insolvency based on the fundamentals. Hmm. Yeah, uh, and here it is in summation. Crypto has a banking problem, but banking doesn't have a crypto problem. Uh, that I think I'm gonna have to Twitter that one. I don't, I don't tw tweet her a lot. I'm not a big Twitter -er, but that is a good. Uh, that's repeatable. So I'm gonna copy that and put it in a notepad, and it'll do that here after a little bit later today. All right, uh, let's keep on moving here. Um, David says, even the fractional reserves were lowered for COVID. So that's interesting. Uh, I didn't know that. And uh, I read somewhere it was 13%, but I don't know if that is for the entire bank itself. Well, it must be. Yeah, it's not per branch. So, you know, any particular branch, if you go in and try to withdraw all your money, you might say that's a problem. Um, but, it, but you don't have to worry right now. So there was a whole lot of um, FUD for, um, for nothing. So let's see, I wanna, what's the moral hazard? This is what I wanna talk about, uh, it was designed to end. So in the end, this is good for Bitcoin because this is exactly what Bitcoin was designed to solve. And um, it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out. And uh, so debate from 2008, financial crisis resurfaces at this, the FTC, FDIC, all these alphabet agencies start to sound the same, don't they? FTC, FDIC, and anyway. Uh, crypto connections. What is the moral dilemma? 
So not a 2008 style bailout, no taxpayer money is involved. Sure. Sure. It isn't not immediately just through inflation. They're going to print a whole bunch of money. And then, uh, uh, you know, this, this video was a bit disturbing this morning. Was, uh, Daniela Camboni has pretty good interviewers and interviewees. And this guy said, he's like, look, this is inning number one. Uh, and, uh, we are not out of the woods by a long shot. So likely they will be forced to raise uh, rates again. The bigger, the bigger concern, you guys, and not to kind of you know get get off target here. This is a crypto mastery class, but the bigger concern is that the uh, we, you know we keep raising interest rates to fight inflation, but that makes our debt more expensive. So at what point do we just say? Sorry, we're insolvent. We can't pay the debt. And someone's even, I think this guy's even saying the banking industry <clears throat> is insolvent in the United States or globally, maybe. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. So, um, but this is interesting. The banks are funded by the banks themselves. And I didn't know that. I thought that was government. Uh, so yeah, because there are systemic risks now, and that's also what this guy was saying in the interview that, um, you know, the big, big banks now, the much bigger banks like JP Morgan have a systemic risk. Like they would have to come in and bail out a JP Morgan and guys, if we wanted to look, and no, we don't, nobody wants this, but <clears throat> a true Lehman brother event would be if, if JP Morgan were to go out. Uh, all hell would break loose. So I don't think they're going to let that happen. Too big to fail. But uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, stockholders in the failed banks will see their equity go to zero. Uh, yeah, that's why the Treasury is saying it's not a bailout. Okay. So uh, let's see. And a new government regulatory agency. Gee, imagine that. The FTIC also announced to make a backstop mechanism. Maybe that's not government. Seemingly permanent with the creation of the bank term funding program. All right. We're going down a rabbit hole there. Just trying to gather a uh, overall feel. And uh, but here, this person, the U.S. government implicitly agreed to backstop more than $17 trillion. I feel like I'm tailing, taking crazy pills because there's surprisingly little discussions of the implications of the Fed um, put, I'm not sure what they mean by that. So uh, deposit risk, Silicon Valley, take on an excess risk. So there, there we go. I mean, so here, the moral assessment. Uh, let's say malevolent, malevolent. Malen Malevolent. That's really hard to say. I can say benevolent all day long. Benevolent. Malevolent. Okay, there we go. Third time's a charm. Um, so, yeah. The, the part of this, too, though, is that, um, you know, SVB was home to some large startups, and a lot of startups were panicking. They couldn't pay their bills. And uh, I think it's not Hulu, but one of those other big um, streaming companies uh, for video has like had like 400 500 million with svb and uh, that'd be scary stuff if they start uh, going down all right um very exciting unlimited fdic insurance stop moving your money out of the five percent banks into five percent money market funds who's with me i agree okay all right guys what else uh real quick we'll do a speed round here systemic risk exception invoked to fully protect all silicon valley bank depositors federals out new bank stop we covered that and uh, crypto is being deep. This is clickbait. What does this mean? Uh, interjected that's from regulatory crackdown. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could. This is worth reading about since January. Banking regulators have continually warned financial institutions of the risks of providing services to crypto. I wonder why. I mean, why is that? Is it they want to get their piece of the pie? Or are they really trying to protect us here? Any theories? Sam says, I remember how Mike talking about how in the middle of COVID, they changed the bank reserve requirement to zero. Is that right? Wow, I didn't. Well, that wouldn't take much to uh, cause a bank run. 
you know. Okay, I'll I'll check with Mike on that, Sam. Thanks for sharing. Uh, so Signature Bank began a distance from crypto in December, promising to diverse its deposit base. Following the fallout of FTX, wouldn't it be, uh, what if we found out later that U.S. government was shorting and buying heavy puts on the whole markets and then just causing it to crash to help service our debt, uh, debt service? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see, what does Coinbase said? 240 million corporate cash. Ooh. Well, they're fine though. 240 corporate million corporate cash at signature. They'll be fine. Uh, Paxo, see, this is why they had to. Well, it's it's strange though. I wonder what's going on here because on the one hand, they say that they want to punish and get rid of crypto banks, right? And um, making it impossible to bank, willing to provide basic services. And yet they bail out Signature Bank to prevent Paxos and um, you know Coinbase from going under. Why is that? I don't, that doesn't make sense to me other than they want to have some control over these in the future because Paxos, these Coinbase, these are the future of crypto in a lot of ways. So, you know, Government comes in to say, look, you know, we saved you, you owe us. You know, I don't know. I can't come up with anything better than that. We'll have to see what happens. All right. So <clears throat> Operation Choke Point may have overplayed its hand this time. Yeah. Then that may be it. The threat remains. And that might be it just to say, listen, we can do this at any point. And, um, yeah, banks continue to open accounts, crypto companies. Some of the industry speculated that regulators will try to cut off bank access. Oh, uh, let's see, Kraken's in the news. Let's see, yeah, this is um, from the CEO of Kraken there, overplay its hand. They will continue to attack the rails, products and companies, facilitating direct crypto ownership. Uh, wasn't the CEO apparently of the Kraken platform. Mm-hmm. So, oh, okay, the premise broke over the weekend that came to light. Eight percent of Circle's reserves were trapped in Silicon Valley Bank. So that's not good. And maybe what's happening is they are going to come in and bail out these companies with some kind of promissory note in debt as a control a function for Paxos and and. Uh, Circle and um, Coinbase. So there you go. That maybe that's probably what will come to light. Is they say, all right, we'll we'll bail you out. We'll come and do this, but you owe us. Like I said. Uh, so anyway, uh, almost done with the news, guys. It's here right at twelve thirty. Mike deposits full, preparing, propelling USTC's value back up to uh, nearly a dollar. I'd still be leery of that, but. Um, uh, unfortunately, some people came, went and transferred and converted their USDC to USDT and took a 7% loss. Or, And there was that article I shared that somebody uh, lost all of it because they did uh, made a mistake and used a questionable um, method for converting that. But here, so here's kind of the you know, TLDR. Someone saying government should have no place in supporting the crypto industry and become the Wild West, as I've been saying, has become the Wild West of fraud, tax evasion, and use in criminal activity and more scams than anyone can count. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so meta cutting jobs. So this economy is still certainly not on the mend just yet. Uh, big news, though, here at Chipotle. <laughs> Oh, say this latest menu edition. All right, they just snuck that, snuck that one in there at the end. All right, guys, let's take a look at the charts. Oh, uh, let's see. I will be on, yes, Pirate J. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, uh, let's see, Pirate J, when you speak with Max, what uh, will that be available? Yeah, um, I've been doing videos on Max's channel, and I'm just, it's been a couple weeks because of everything going on. Haven't been able to get to it. So <clears throat> we'll, um, I'm going to try to knock that out here. And uh, Myrene, if you're listening, I'll try to get that uploaded today if we can. 
So right after class, I'm going to dive into that. It's probably a, a bit of a review of what we're talking about now, actually. So I shouldn't have closed all those news articles, but I'll pull up some related ones. So let's kind of dive in here. Well, let's take a look at the DXY. By the way, the Dow bouncing a bit, but uh, 3,700, 3,700 is going to be strong resistance. So, you know, I, again, this is not the... Uh, this is not the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, folks. And hang on, wait for it. Turn that frown upside down. Now it's a frown. Okay, so th this, but look at that. No, that's not good. That does not look good to me. So <clears throat> let's see. DXY in real time, 103.789, the daily, about the same. So we're right back to this pullback zone. So what happens if the Dixie bounces here? I mean, we're in crypto pullback zone. We got a bit of a rally. Now, if we break down lower, we're back. We're in the crypto rally zone. Certainly could happen. At some point, I imagine we'll do that. I just, <clears throat> did we do it yet? I don't know. Uh, this is sort of more of what we're looking for here. And uh, sorry, somebody put, asked for the link for this, by the way. Uh, I was uh, out uh away from my desk. So there's the link for my DXY chart. And um, above. Okay, if you're watching the replay, you just have to type it out. Maybe we can put it in the first, uh, in the comments, Myri, maybe you could grab that link, put it in the first comment in the, um, on the uh, replay on the YouTube channel. And if you're watching the replay on the YouTube channel, and please like and subscribe if you like the content so far. Man, I started to sound like a YouTuber. All right, let's keep going, you guys. Uh, so there's that. Keep that handy. Uh, we have the uh, overall here on the uh, these charts. So, you know, I uh, have had this drawn for some time. If we do push higher, there's that $30,000 zone and resistance here. It was support back here earlier in the year. Flipped as you know, support, 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 flipped and support here, flipped as resistance back in June, June of 2022. So if we come up here, likely we'll roll back over. But now there is this new scenario and, and that I'm going to draw I, I that with these new developments, right? That if we do come back down here, that uh, the other scenario there would be uh, probably faster. So... Uh, uh, these are not to date. This is just to make it visually easier to read. Okay, so got some uh, various scenarios there. All right, we'll see what happens. But um, let's see. Uh, quick, let pause this. Wait a minute. What? Binance halts G Great British pound deposits and withdrawals. What's that all about? Um, what's going on here? Banks collapsing. Stable coins depegging. Uh, is it, did I miss something? Not nothing too major. That that's yeah, that's old news. I thought maybe silver's breaking news, and okay, so that's why I clicked on that. Um, all right, let's get through these here. Where were we? We got a lot of these to get through, and I forget which one. So this is on the monthly, right? So what we have here, uh, we do have still our TSI turning higher, and um, we're breaking that twenty line though. So. This points to the bottom is in and we're going higher. I mean, just, just based on this, remember when we talked about the hiccup back in 2015 and it had that little rollover and the prices fell back 50%. So that's why I was saying, is it going to be like 2015 or are we going to have something more like 2019? Now, we're, we haven't gotten to the end of the month yet. We're only halfway through. So we're not there yet. If we can close on the monthly TSI above 20 and ideally above this line here, which acted as support could be resistance. And that's what we want to watch for because we, we could still pull back and have a hiccup here, you guys. So that's why we want to be kind of careful right now. And, uh, you know, certainly we want to, want to catch this rally up in here. This is a very bullish candle, but uh, at that 30,000 level at that range, that'll be a good time to be taking some profits. Okay, not sell all of it because it could just keep on rocketing higher. We know, we know how this Bitcoin thing is. <clears throat> and um, 
let me just do one thing though because i haven't haven't had any desire to do a fibonacci on this thing but where else could we go on the golden pocket we could certainly see 486 okay i'm going to be like that idea and i'll just uh leave that as we can leave it red as a resistance level. But that's a golden pocket there. And uh, so if um, if we were to sell some at the 30,000 level, 48,600 would be where I'd be taking the more profit. Wait for a pullback. Okay. So cool. Pretty nice. Uh, in uh, an active trader, um, We'll, we'll unpack this more tomorrow. I'll give you a link to those charts on Active Trader. Uh, all right, so here's a different uh, on monthly here, just to unpack this a little bit more. And what do we have here on the money flow index? Still, it's, it's trying to break higher there. Need to get to the end of the month. That is kind of a lagging indicator. What do we have on the RSI? RSI breaking back above that 45 area. So that's looking pretty good. But probably going to see some kind of a retest here. I would imagine, but, um, but yeah, I mean, look, I was, you know, I was saying in my mind, I was hesitant to say this looks like the bottom because this thing tends to come down and bounce once, twice, three times, and then shoot up higher. So, you know, this look does look bullish. It does I'm not going to lie. It looks good. We've got the um, MACD looking pretty solid coming up nicely. So probably we're still looking at June before the, you know, the money really starts coming back in, but this is, uh, this chart says it all, folks. You know, not a big MACD uh, user on the shorter time frames, but it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful chart on the monthly. And that's what I was telling people to, if you guys remember, I was saying, get out of these markets, November uh, of 2021, and then really pounding the table in January because of right there, just that cross. So when we have that bullish cross, everyone talks about the golden uh, cross, sorry, the, the death cross and the um, the golden cross, this is far more telling that MACD on a monthly. So this, for me, puts us out about maybe May, but I'm thinking probably June, maybe July. July has been a great month for moves the bottom in 2021 and 2022 had the rally in July. So, um, you know, Mark Yusko thinks we'll hit it a little bit sooner. But we'll see. Let's put on our dynamic ATR. Still not out of the woods there yet. Uh, I'll put on the the uh, Ichimoku here on the daily weekly here in a moment. Let's take a look at this uh, weekly chart here. So I'll open this up here. We had that death cross. It was kind of a big nothing burger. And I was saying that. I was like, guys, the death cross is kind of like, so what? People, it's not a big deal. Big, scary name, but doesn't really do much. So, but here's what is significant is we are now back above the 200-week moving average and stayed above that bull market support band. We talked about that last week. And let's see, did we get to the middle point of that vector candle? Not quite though. This big vector candle has not retested the midpoint. That's a little concerning to me. Uh, but uh, we did fill both of those CME gaps though. So the short-term things are looking bullish. And at this point, uh, I'm looking for how to draw a new channel. Let's see. I'm not going to do it on this chart because it's going to make it a little bit messy. Uh, I'll draw it briefly just to show you where my eyes are going. So when we always, you know, I'm going to be careful drawing lines in the sand. But, you know, could that be our new trend, upward trend channel? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I will leave it here. So, um, you know, and well, I'm going to leave it there because look at this. Where would that take us? That to me looks like the new trend channel because what what do we have there right at the top of that trend channel? 30,000. Okay. So, yeah, so that's uh, something we need to um, to keep in mind. I think, you know, again, if we push higher here, this could easily push up very fast and to $30,000 range. Part of that would be short squeeze related. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of people shorting, and I know a couple <clears throat> day trading chat rooms, they were short. He's telling people, guys, you want to be short here? Well, uh, he's he's kind of losing, the, he's losing a lot of face right now and a bunch of subscribers. Some people are saying they got wrecked and this is, anyway, so um, at any rate, the good news is we are, we are, we bounced off support on this trend channel there. 
looks like possibly new upper trending channel. Bull market support band is intact. Breaking above the 200 week EMA, sorry, MA, moving average, not the EMA. And um, but that's good because as we know, that purple line has always been the line in sand and strong support back in the COVID crash and all the way back here for in December 18. So, um, so that's good. That is the uh, very bullish looking case there. However, though, I will call attention to something. Uh, this is dangerous. Anyone see it? Big divergence on the volume, though. Look at how much volume there was back here when FTX collapsed. And even in here, when we pushed higher, we barely have any volume down here. That is highly suspect. And um, now the volume of the volatility is at like a record low right now. So remember yesterday, uh, those of you an active trader, I was saying, I think a big move is coming. I don't know if it's up or down. Well, we, we're getting it on the surface, but these markets are really getting good at faking us out. And the reason for that is, and I posted it in the active trader chat, is so you have to keep in mind, you guys, hear, hear, hear what I'm saying. That uh, remember that a supercomputer AI beat the best chess player, Kasparov, in 1997, 25, 26 years ago. The strongest AIs are going to be, you know, follow the money. Who's paying millions and billions of dollars? It's certainly in the hundred, you know, I think I read and I posted a while back a company that um, sold their AI basically to a hedge fund and the financial markets. And in their language for their investors, they said their technology will deliver superior returns for the investment house. What does that mean? It means it's going to screw us out of a lot of money. That's what we're up against. Trading is not what it used to be. We can still win and our edge is with swing trading. So that's what we do in the indicators. Uh, the day trading game is becoming very uh, complicated. And the only way to beat it then is to be a flea on a dog. Wait till there's a big dog running, big market move, and jump on it. Because if you start day trading those um, after hours markets, they can move markets. They can move, they can move price. And the way they do it is they have an A book and a B book. And they even come out and show that a lot of the trading volume is between exchanges. It's not retail buying and selling. It is exchanges moving price around in ways that they can do. Uh, what I'm looking for here is to share something. Okay, here it is. Hang on one second. And um, I'm not sure if I want to share this here. I'll show it, share it briefly. I don't know. I haven't dived. I haven't done this yet. Somebody shared this with me, and he said that it. Um, uh, it, it, it's kind of opened their eyes to a lot of what the, uh, the algo trading of today looks like. And unfortunately I'm down a monitor though, and I can't bring it over. Um, it's, it's at top traders unplugged. Okay. Maybe I'll pull it up here, but, but anyway, the point is that, uh, the, at the institutional level, there's a lot of algorithmic trading going on. Now, here's a TLDR as well. We are working on one and kind of diving into how to take these indicators and build them into an algo, not a trading bot, a more of a swing trading algo. But that'll be that'll be months of testing. So, not here to pre-sell you guys on anything. So, you guys, uh, let's let's move on. I just want to say uh, that that's something we're looking at and. Um, what I want to look for now, though, are more divergences here. So basically, we uh, no divergence here. I'm going to delete that. I was wrong on that. I thought the RSI would come back down. It's pushing higher. Now we are back above this key support resistance level on a weekly basis. Now, does that mean it's going to stay here? We need to stay. Does it stay above this 50, 60 line as of Sunday? because it could certainly still come back down. So we're going to keep an eye on that. All right. What in the stochastics RSI, we kind of looked at that on the monthly basis here uh, overbought. Uh, on the monthly, it's uh, oversold and pushing higher. On the weekly, came down. Probably will push up and retest this. So what about that? We go up for a few weeks. And then what if it comes? This all fits sort of the narrative I'm painting. So we push higher, short squeeze, money flows in, pushes to 30,000, RSI heads up to here, and then we see a pullback. And how deep, how far, we don't know. Okay. 
but um, that would make sense to me because also we're seeing we're uh, over overbought on the TSI on the weekly. All right. So um, anyway, let's look at the weekly a little different view here. I'm just kind of skimming through some of the other things on what's moving and uh, the total market caps back above a trillion dollars, you guys. So that's good news. And uh, so we'll look at some some coins here in a minute. So, but yeah, TSI overbought, uh, signals green. We've got to take profit on here. This is on the weekly basis. So this still, this also follows through on the, what I'm suggesting. So if we have two weeks of another week and a half of bullish movements and we get the bag of money symbol, this is another indication to get out of the market. Now it's not just a cutesy tool here. You know, even though you might expect Mario Brothers to come jumping along, grabbing all the coins is kind of fun, but uh, it is remarkably good at kind of telling you when to uh, when to um, get out of the markets. You know, here you would have gotten out, you would have gotten back in again, but then you would have been stopped out shortly thereafter when this went red. Okay, so but look at that right here, got out before it came down. So that's what I'd be expecting. It uh, doesn't mean it has to happen, but that's what I'm, I'd be watching for on this chart here. So let's look at one more view on the weekly. Now this one here is, um, let's see, uh, I've got this, I had this drawn out. Let's see, get rid of that one. Well, this came down and let's draw that one there. Get rid of this one. I'm trying to grab this one there. I uh, just drawn lines in the sand here, you guys. So well, with that here, I think these scenarios, I guess I was wrong on these as well. It remains to be seen. I mean, we still could very well see this uh, and this coming back down. Uh, the week is far from over. Uh, and as we know, news, uh, you know, this thing, my, my gut feeling here is this sells off end of day and we have a topping tail right here. And, and this just says, hey, we're not quite ready yet. This is when you want to pull on or pull up your uh, EMAs. I guess I don't have it on this chart to see what are the um, the 21 and 50 day moving average, uh, week moving average is doing. So I'm sure we have this on another chart. We've got a number of these weekly charts here. So let's do that. Open that up here and we'll look at that. So we've got the 50 EMA. Let me add in. So, you know, this was this was kind of a rocket almost, not quite, but, you know, you see, you see a big red candle here on top of the 21 and 50 and that ribbon tightening. This is what can happen. And uh, we kind of had a rocket here on this right at the bottom of the CME gap. I mean, we came down to the support trend line. And um, so uh, so what do we have here? Is that a bear bull flag? It's kind of not really. No, it's just a tra trading trend zone. But, um, you know, again, I think this could certainly push up here. I'm sorry. I apologize. We have not filled the upper CME gap. Uh, I misspoke there. I thought that we would have done that by now. Now, we have some resistance here, but the CME gap is still very much alive. So 27 to 28, I think, you know, uh, certainly that's uh, likely to pop into this range. But I would be... You know, it, maybe we pull back and then push to that 30k level, but um, we have this pushing up that high. Let's put a Bollinger Band on it. See if this thing has legs to get much farther. Probably going to slow down here. I mean, look, we've got a lot of open air below beneath this candle on the uh, daily, coming down to that uh, daily uh, 21 and 50. So you certainly could spike into this range. Probably what happens. You know, unless we just have some more bullish um, sentiment here, but but I'd suggest more something more like that. Let me get rid of that. Doesn't work well on the weekly, but um, well, something along these lines. The rising EMAs will catch it, and then we'd see something like that. I know this isn't an entirely useful, you guys. I'm just saying that. Um, Keep in mind these scenarios. And uh, so if we do get a strong break above this, this area, I would say time to start looking for some scalp swing longs, swing longs more than scalping. Uh, and uh, on that Ichimoku, we're, we are above the clouds. We've got some bullish signals there. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, on the uh, weekly. Let me do that. I'll add the uh, Ichimoku there. One I like is the Ali Ichimoku. And uh, so on the weekly, we're not above it. On the daily, we are. 
So uh, hang on, second tier. And if I lose you guys, I've got really strong winds outside. It might blow the internet out. I don't think so, but it's possible. All right, and then uh, where's that Etchimoku here? Yeah, so, okay. So, um, you know, it is interesting that the Ichimoku went green back in January of 23, and we didn't catch it. We just didn't think it looked good enough. And it was, and it got above the cloud as well. So, and then we fell back in or back into the green cloud, but we're, we're back above the cloud here. It's a good sign. Uh, for today's price that the Ichimoku, the Alley Ichimoku gives a price target and it put that dot right where it stopped. So I think that's the high of the day. So um, interesting. All right. Uh, let's see. Coming back into the daily chart here. We kind of talked about that. Yeah, there's a group that I know is shorting that level of 26,000. And um, so be careful going long here. I'm trying to put this away. And uh, now we have this head and shoulders. We had this head and shoulders. And, um, you know, we saw this drop here. I'm like, was that the right shoulder? And, and it, did, it was not, not really a full shoulder. So if we do pull over and down, and bounce around here for a bit. This is still very. This is still in the cards, you know. But it doesn't look like it. it feels like it wants to go higher, but it does need to pull back here a bit. Uh, I, my opinion, not need to, has to, you know. But uh, at any rate, let's see. So I think we've covered that. Any more questions, you guys? Let's see. I don't see anything else coming in. Uh, I do. You know, this does look good. On uh, did look good yesterday on the uh, the ribbons pushing higher, getting a bit overbought on the daily. So using our indicators, the TSI though, you know, this certainly can stay overbought on that uh, TSI. The signal line rather is going green, nice slope and velocity there. And if we get a bell tomorrow, then so on the daily and monthly, we look bullish on the weekly, we look a little bit overbought. So what does that mean? We could push hard into the weekend higher, even spike up to that 30,000 range or that, you know, very easily that uh, CME gap range all in here. And, uh, and then some kind of pullback. So, I mean, I don't know, guys. We need to kind of take it bite day by day. And, of course, keep you updated in the active traders. So those of you that are in there, most of you are. So, again, that's uh, moonstream.io slash M3 if you have interest in uh, that, if you're not in there already. Okay. So, we're using the indicators here. Uh, we could look at the one hour, four hour. Let's just take a quick look at that. And then we'll look at some coin projects. Uh, and I've got some indicators here that are not crypto mastery. That's fine. Just playing around with them. But uh, let's do this. Uh, in terms of here, let me turn off uh, this here. Uh, okay. Uh, our, so we're definitely overbought on the vol index. And uh, on a you know, great place to get in would have been back here when we had when we had the uh, ERI, the, the TSI went green above 20. The signal line here going green. And then the vol index going here. So we don't talk about the vol index as much as we should. So especially coming out of low zones, this vol index on a four hour and shorter time frames is so good on breaking above here that uh, I usually have an alert on there, a recurring alert. So I'm going to reset that. And I'm going to do once per bar close. And I'm going to say uh, crossing. Uh, well, there's two ways. I like crossing up over the 20 line. Okay. Now, the other way to do that is crossing below the 80 line. So let's look at here and here when we had crop braces, breaks, sorry, breaks below that 80 line. And that coincides nicely for tops in the markets here. So we had a bit of a drop here, down, uh, faked out, kind of dipped below it, but this was the bigger drop. And then we saw the markets drift down, 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 down. So we are in overbought territory on the four hour, but it can certainly stay there for a long time as we've seen down in this range. So what we wanna wait for, and maybe I'll set an alert for that is also breaking down below 80 on the four hour volatility index. So breaking, crossing down, the 80 line, and I'm going to do that once per bar close. Okay, because those will be good short-term swing opportunities, both long and short. 
Okay, so um, that's uh, that's all I want to get into there. We can kind of pull up some movers. Coming right up on the hour, though, so I don't have a lot of time. Let's see questions. Brandon says, um, hey, Brandon, how do you think the Fed's going to take banks failing due to high interest rates? Market seems to think it will be paused years. Yeah, we covered that early in the class. I don't. I might have joined later. The um, certainly is is probably priced in that fifty basis points is out. They may. I, I think that at this point they're expecting they won't raise rates at all. Not this time. Uh, they could still raise twenty five basis points, but um, as we were saying earlier, that typically they will keep raising rates till they break something, and then they'll back off. And two banks failing that quickly is a good sign that they broke something. So I would imagine that uh, they don't raise. And so FMC is coming up. And so that could certainly be the catalyst of 30,000. And then we see that pullback that I'm expecting. I don't think we blow th past uh, 30,000 on this go. So let's just pull this up here, news and events here and uh, the calendar pull up FOMC. So uh, the Fed announcement here, um, one we're looking for, we had CPI today, and then we've got, uh, is it the 20, it's 22nd, isn't it? Because when is it? Do you have it? Um, there's an FOMC calendar here too. So there's in here, Fed calendar, Forex, they have a pretty good Fed meeting calendar there. So I know it's right around the corner and I think it's the 22nd. Do you guys, anyone have it? It's 123, oops, that's it. Uh, 21, 22nd, so I was right. Yeah, so that's next week. So um, next Wednesday, so we'll be having our active trader class then. Yeah, I think they're, they're gonna rally it into the meeting and then maybe there's a, another surprise or it's a sell on the news event, you know, and then the next wave of, uh nonsense uh, well i know we can't call it nonsense these are important things that are happening it's just it's just you just can't help but wonder what's really going on here you know what i mean um at any rate uh but see that's things pulling back already here on the uh, bollinger let me just confirm that is the uh the 3bb bollinger band and that's if you're new here that basically means uh, third standard deviation, not the default. So uh, it kind of feels like it might be, yeah. So third, three standard deviations. So uh, that's works much, much better for crypto. And uh, so we came right up to that pulled back. This just seems, seems like this is, uh, well, we'll see what happens. I don't know. If we start putting in a right shoulder here, then we're, then we don't want to be uh, worry a bit. Uh, so just, it's too early to tell. Uh, all right, let's take a look at some coins and movers. Let's take a look at Ethereum. And um, where is that total? Let's see, total market cap on the way down the list here. However, uh, total market cap back above a trillion, but that's going to be a hard nut to crack. This trillion level, as we know, all the hard ground numbers is, uh, has been problematic for Bitcoin. So can we hold on here? I don't know. It's, uh, it's a tricky one. So uh, we'll see what happens on that. And we also have that DXY possibly going to um, break down or bounce. It's also at a key support level like we looked at at the beginning of class. So, you know, uh, we'll see what happens here. Tomorrow should be an interesting class in, um, in the active trader class. So we've got some coins moving here. Like uh, everything's bouncing, of course. Uh, I wouldn't be necessarily chasing this at this point. I would rather see a double bottom on these because, you know, your eyes should be going to can I draw the, you know, these trend channels? What's happening? Is it in an uptrend trend channel yet? Not exactly. And um, these things do tend to kind of come down and retest and refine support. We've got uh, Adam, we've got AVAX, and uh, let's see, XTZ, some of these. You know, they're all pumping, but uh, it's not as um, exciting as I would like to say it is. I feel very uh, uneasy about this. Okay, so um, where's Ethereum? Here it is. All right, let me turn off that Bollinger Band. It's a bit uh, overwhelming on the eyes. And let's take a look at uh, a couple other things. And we're on daily. We have the ATR going green, but that's been very choppy with this. The uh, Ichimoku here. Okay, that's interesting that the Ichimoku is bearish on Ethereum 
as of two days ago, but that it, it looks like it's going to flip flop. It's, you know, all it has to have is that green. It's going to flip flop tomorrow. So you can disregard that. So when the Tenkin line crosses above the Kijin, the green above the pink, I just got a message from coin signals over a hundred million dollars in uh, shorts were liquidated uh, this morning. You know, that is the name of the game. The, they are moving price to bleed out all of these margin traders. And that happens on a daily basis. So just be careful that you're not saying, Oh my God, it's time. Everyone we're going higher. Bitcoin has finally arrived and the bull run has started. Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, let's see what happened there. Yeah. hundred million in shorts. This is just coin signals, free, uh, free version liquidating bit on BTC alone this morning. Yeah. And I'm sure this weekend there was a lot, uh, there was more, you know, liquidations were, were massive. Uh, I'm sure on the both sides last week. So um, let's do this though. Uh, so that's kind of bullish. Uh, once this crosses back over on Ethereum and I'll turn that off. Let me do this. We're going to end with the scanner. See if we can find any gems. Come down here to the crypto screener. You guys have anything you want to look at? We can do that also. I'm just going to skim through here. We have, um, usually I turn on my, um, what should we call it, filter, but it just, it takes time. We don't really have a lot of extra, extra time, but it has all these uh, junk wrapped Ethereum coins and things that are not really clear. So I guess we are stuck with, Okay, putting on our filter here then. And um, let's see, we've got the top gainers. Kind of looking for the, uh, the strong buy, technical rating, exchanges. Let me turn off a lot of these other exchanges though, because that's just too many, it's overwhelming. So I don't want, um, we'll do Binance and I'll do Coin, uh, Coinbase, maybe Ku uh, Kraken, KuCoin I guess, as well. So uh, basically we've got Metis doing something and, um, but you know, these are, these are kind of like dead cap bounces. Where's the volume on these? We should definitely be watching volume with these. So we're on declining volume. We're rallying on declining volume. And that to me does not feel good. And the suspect and we've got SRM doing a little bit, but this just percentage wise is not enough. We've got S Dow. That's of course, one that we like and uh, Moonstream was our pick last month. It was down a bit, but it's bouncing back nicely. And so S Dow, keep an eye on. We'll, we'll keep an eye on. Let's see, and let's see. I don't see you guys any questions. So C pool. Sam wants to look at Mina. I don't see a whole lot here. We've got looks rare. You know, again, dead. These are dead cat bounces. These are still in downtrends. So keep that in mind. And um, let's see. Okay, Gala Games, nothing really looking too great. Oh, uh, not, not, I mean, the, the one thing I'll point out here is potentially they're breaking out of some trend channels. You know, but be careful with these like uh, Gala and, um, you know, Sand and uh, the Metaverse projects. They, they don't have any earnings. They're going to be a while before they make any money. So, yeah. Anyway, we're running a bit out of time, you guys. Let me look at Mina and then um, uh, Dead Cat Bounce. So you can Google that, Sam. It just means, um, well, it's a horrible reference. You know, in the old days, if you dropped a, a cat from a roof, which I guess they did back in the olden days, even it would hit the ground and it would bounce. Doesn't mean it could fly. Um, I have, all right, let's, let's see. We have got time for two, you guys. We'll do Mina and uh, the other one, is it Mina or Mini? You guys are trying to sneak a bunch in here. Is it Mina? Shoot, hang on, I got, I, I, I've got a monitor down, so yeah, everything's not where it should be. Mina, okay, good. Uh, we'll just do it on Coinbase with Tether. I, I mean, I'm not sure what you want me to tell you here on this 
chart. Let's see. Let me do it on this one because I've got the indicators loaded. Mina on there. Okay. Well, all right. I take that back. Mina looks good. Um, yeah. So so it's a back above. Let's just start here. It's it's back above. It's 21 and 50 day moving average. Now I would wait till the end of today if it can hold here and is likely to kind of inch higher. That looks that would be great. Uh, if it can't and it sells off below this level, then I would say this is likely to come down and have like a W double test. You know, uh, you'd see something like uh, this, you know, or even down like this. But if Bitcoin's going to run to 30,000, these will also go. So I would see if this goes higher um, and it can hold above the 21 and 50 day moving average. So with that, uh, let's take a look at our indicators here. So we've got the TSI breaking above 20. So that's great. I like that. And you've got this uh, ERI came in right here. We can turn on the ERI arrows. So what's the mantra? ERI, TSI, signal and bell. We don't have a bell with signal line. Signal lights moving toward that area. It looks like it will cross over maybe in a day, day or two. So this would be a point to potentially start legging into the position. But if you were to buy early, I would have a tight stop loss here, right below this level here, okay? Uh, and then ideally wait for that signal line. All right. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We've got Ali, let's see, not familiar with that. So uh, similar, yeah, I mean, these are good. These are decent. So uh, this is an AI coin, you know, uh, we have that list for following an active trader for the AI coins, ran hard since early this year. And um, so getting back above that, uh, that 21 and 50, the moving average ribbon is condensing. That's generally when these things kind of take off. Uh, TSI, ERI was here. TSI turning green above the 20 line. I, you know, I would feel comfortable with that, taking a small trade and then adding to it when the signal line goes green. And then the, um, if you get the key and the bell to add to that, but that's a nice, nice candle there. It's, it's almost a rocket, not a big fuse, but it's right on that 50 period, 50 day moving average. So, and we know these AI coins have been hot. So, you know, um, I like that, you know, it looks pretty solid to me right there. Good one. All right. So uh, we've got Velo. And of course, uh, none of this is financial advice, education only, et cetera. Velo had, has had a nice little move here. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that. It is, there's a rocket on the 21 day moving average. Who recommended Velo? Pirate J? Good. Yeah, let's look at the TSI. TSI, now it's, yeah, this looks pretty solid. That, that signal line's about to go. You know, so. Looks like uh, these are some writer downers here. So we've got Velo. And what else do we say? Ali. And then Mina. Okay. Well, just based on the technicals, what I'm seeing here and the, the indicators that we have, of course, uh, we haven't had our radar. The radar is mostly green, rather. And um, what else could we put on this? We could put our vol index on it. These generally, I think it's probably overbought at this point. And uh, so really the, the core of this is the um, ERI, TSI, signal and bell. But uh, you guys have, uh, again, in the active trader, you have your, your M3 trader, you have your success trader checklist. So how many do you see here? Well, ERI, yes. Uh, and then you've got the TSI green above 20, so that's two. You don't have the signal yet, but you have that um, Rocket on the the rocket's not on the launch pad. It's a little higher, so this one this one won't shoot as high. You know, just imagine that the higher the rocket on the launch pad, the flames are shooting out on the launch pad there, and the closer the launch pad, the more propulsion. Sort of, what is Newton's law? You know, body in motion and push opposite forces, something like that. So if you've got the launch pad here and a nice deep fuse. I think shoot could shoot higher into the into the the sky. Now, typically we want to see the launch pad as a moving average, but we could almost say that there's a launch pad there because all right, this is interesting. So support flipped as resistance, came down as support, 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 resistance, resistance, resistance. I don't know, guys. This velo. 
Looks pretty good to me. All right, gold star for uh, Pirate J for finding that. And um, yeah, I think that looks really good. Let's look left here and see, does this have a history of uh, launching into the, but you know, doesn't necessarily have to, that rocket symbol with that uh, deep body there, the, the fuse, the launch pad sitting right here on the launch pad. The fuse is at the 21 day. Uh, Bella looks pretty good to me here, guys. All right. Well, um, anyway, that's all we have for today. And uh, again, if you are watching the replay, these are being pushed on to YouTube. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, at some point, we'll be doing these live on YouTube. I guess that might be good, good to do. Uh, speaking of YouTube, I've got to run you guys and record a, a, a follow on for uh, another channel here. So um, we'll see most of you guys in tomorrow's Active Trader class. Again, that's uh, moonstream.io slash m3 for more information there okay everybody have a great day and uh let me, we'll see how these work out and see if any of these uh you know we do have some good opportunities these are the these are the opportunities to take i know some of you that i coach privately are having some issues making bad trades if you're not following these guidelines that's probably why you're making bad trades these are the risk favorable trades as always, you want to keep a stop loss. So here on, if it was Velo, I would keep it right below this support resistance area. So, you know, look for these areas also. But look, does look like we're seeing money and volume coming. Well, volume, no, we're seeing money. We're seeing prices come back into this market. And if we see Bitcoin head to 30,000, you know, this, uh, all of these will run. I can't say all of them, but um, many of them, if not most of them will run up until a point. Now, just doing a quick... Why is helium going down? Pull that up. Just doing a quick target on that, doesn't it? On the, the golden pocket on this Velo, though, it doesn't have too much higher to go uh, with that, but doesn't mean it has to stop there. Uh, let's just see what's happening here. Are the markets selling off? Not really. So what's up with helium coin? Why would that be going down? Let's see. Uh, we've got uh, ONE. Got, we do have some interesting things to unpack in tomorrow's class. Filecoin, where is where is uh, helium? Um, and then we'll, I've got to wrap things up here. Let's probably look at, why don't you just do it this way, HNT. You know, I don't know. That's why I said alerts. So my, maybe some bad news on helium coin. Do we know? Everything is going up. Helium's getting getting tanked in it. It's, it's funny. I was thinking about helium this morning. And I was some, doing some math, like it would be a great buy at a dollar. Uh, anyway, we're not out of time, you guys, but uh, let's, uh, if you guys, maybe there's some news on helium, but um, anyway, it doesn't look good. I'll uh, let everyone go though. Thanks everyone. And uh, we will, David says, Heather, helium tether is fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, everyone. Well, we'll see you tomorrow and um, we will have more information by then, I'm sure.